Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkster. Today, I'm not going to show you any tricks. Rather, I'm going to try to explain or find an answer for the question that I get asked uh, pretty frequently, which is how the hell did you figure all this shit out? So, um, I want to talk about my method of, of learning, actually. Uh, this is this is what I'm doing with FL Studio is basically using this as a platform through which to learn music theory in a much more intuitive way. Um, I don't think that traditional music theory in its in its proper sense is going to be best applied to the next generation of producers and, and composers who are going to be learning on a piano roll. Right? Uh, they don't even need to know uh, white keys from black keys. In fact, we could probably reinvent this numbering system to come up with, or you know, the lettering A through G system to come up with a more intuitive way for the electronic musicians of the next age, but um, I don't think I'm quite up to, <laughs> up to that level yet. Anyway, about my, my method. Alright, I learned FL Studio through a method that I guess I could call experimentation within limitation. Alright, as an example, I've created this piece. This is today's experiment for me, all right? And I'm working with one instrument only. And my challenge is to learn and understand velocities as best I can, okay? So this is what I do. I, I decide that I wanna learn velocities. So in order for me to learn velocities, I have to isolate velocities from everything else, okay? I have to work only and exclusively with velocities. So what I've done, is I've taken one instrument, I've put together one melody, and I've refused to change that melody, all right? The melody is this. Now you'll hear that a lot today. Um, my challenge, as I said, was to come up with as many different patterns just by changing the velocity, okay? Um, I, I expected to come out with five or six, I ended up coming out with about 12. So I'll show you uh, some of the things you can do with velocity. I'll just share today's experiment with you. Uh, one thing you can do with velocities is you can make certain notes stand out louder than others. Same melody, right? You can give it a bit of a sweeping crescendo and just decrescendo effect. It's pretty subtle, actually. Um, again, you can make certain notes stand out, but you can do it with varying rhythms. So that sounds, it sounds almost like a totally different melody and it might be because of that offbeat timing. Again, we're, we're dropping a few notes here to add a bit of uh, dynamics and some extra rhythm to it. Ah, now that one's a bit unexpected. I like that. This is the same pattern basically, but with the notes dropped all the way to zero. Cool. Uh, here's another pattern which works in groups of seven notes. That one's just random. Well, in this particular pattern, I've cheated and I've added some delays, some rather strange shaped delays, but uh, it works out. I like the effect. Yep, and that's it, 12 patterns, all using the same exact melody and only with slight changes to the velocity, I've been able to create um, 12 different rhythms and melody patterns that I can then use to produce a song. But I didn't set out today to show you how to use velocity. Rather, I want to illustrate my method of experimentation. You have to impose limits on yourself in order to get focus on one particular element. All right. Um, I've mentioned in several tutorials about um, how you can do MIDI imports, right? And I think it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic idea. It's a great way to get started because what you end up with is you can eliminate all of the songwriting aspects and you can just focus on one particular um, instrument or you can focus on one particular um, 
you know, effect if, if you want to play around with your mixing or whatever, things like that. Um, what I'd like to ask you to do if you're watching this, if, if you've been watching my tutorials for some time and you want to give this method a try, uh, let's start with this very simple experiment. This is what I would suggest. Let me just save this in case my video fails. What I would suggest is to start a new, start a new piece, all right, and just use whatever template or whatever you want to use. And limit yourself, instead of limiting yourself to one instrument, instead limit yourself to just like two bars, right? So the only piece of, or the only um, amount of space you can use are the first two bars, all right? Now if you do this, you'll you'll eliminate all of the actual songwriting aspects of your piece. You won't have to worry about stretching out to five minutes. And just try to concentrate on producing one sound. And that sound might be something complex. This is a pretty complex pattern. It's got a lot going on. Um, as many as a dozen instruments are playing. A lot of effects built into it. And a lot of mixing has gone into making everything sound right. Now it's it's actually quite easy when you're working with something that has a limitation in time and you don't have to worry about um, the remainder. You find that you focus a lot more on making every individual note sound perfect. All right, and this is um, one of my more complex short patterns. As you see in the playlist, it's only one bar long. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Once again. Now, if you do this pattern, or rather if you perform an exercise like this one, working with a small, limited amount of time, and just combining as many instruments in as many um, you know, professional sounding ways as possible, I guess. It's, it's a lot easier when you're working with a small pattern to achieve a more professional mix, simply because you don't have the distraction and the pressure on you of making things sound consistently good throughout your entire piece. Rather, you can just focus on this particular moment, just this one measure, the one bar, and it very nicely fits into one pattern, and it's a lot easier to manage. And if you perform this experiment at home, your reward will be a really hot sound effect. Now, isn't that better than this? Hell yeah. Why are you still using the default Windows sounds? You've got a sound studio right here. So you don't have to use it to make music. You can use it for little jingles, little beats, and little sound effects. All right, give it a try. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got. I will have more on this particular method, and especially more on using small and uh, complex patterns to create songs. But if you can get this down before my next tutorial, you'll be a lot more you'll be a lot better prepared for it. So what I'm going to try to outline is how I construct a song and using a method like this is, is actually pretty important. Anyway, uh, this is Ace Pinkter signing out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>